Hello folks, I'm Filler B, and welcome to Stellaris and my cute little Stellaris guides to help new players and even experienced players learn something about the game. In this episode we are talking about construction ships. Maybe not something most people talk about, but I thought it was good to go over all little aspects and things that a construction ship can do. So the three primary purposes of a construction ship is to construct outposts, which is what you do to claim star systems, to construct mining and research stations, which is what you do to claim these resources, like this energy here for instance, or this energy here and the rare material over there, um, and uh, you use them to construct megastructures, which we'll talk about in a minute. So let's talk about outposts first. Uh, after a system is surveyed, uh, you can claim the system by building an outpost in it. So you select your uh, your construction ship and you build an outpost here. And just by clicking this button you can build an outpost and it costs you 75 uh, influence and 90 alloys. Now keep in mind that this goes up the further away from your known space that you uh, build. So if you wanted to, because you can claim an outpost anywhere you want as long as you survey the system, and to sur once the survey is sy uh, system is surveyed, an easy way to tell is that it's in this white text here, and if you hover over it, it says Unclaim System. Whereas the system that you haven't surveyed but have explored is, uh, like Cirrus here, is uh, called an Unsurveyed System, and it's gray, so you cannot build a, uh, a ship here. If I right-click this, uh, the construction ship uh, selected, I cannot build here because it is not fully surveyed. And a system you haven't explored yet or surveyed is, known, is unknown, it doesn't have a name under it. So, if you're going to survey a system, you right-click, pick Build Starbase. But if you want to uh, build it over here, say in this system here, you can. There's no requirement for them being contiguous for you to build an outpost and claim a system, but it's going to cost you more. In fact, it's going to cost you 75 more influence every time you want to build a system that's further away. So, this system cost me 75 and 90 alloys, influence and alloys, and this one is going to cost me 150 influence and 90 alloys, and this one is going to cost me 225 influence and 90 alloys. So you can use that to sort of block off um, enemies or uh, other empires from gaining systems that you really want, but it's a huge price to pay. It's very steep. Um, let's talk about good strategy. So good strategies early on, especially like this game where we just started, is to take your uh, construction ship and build um, claiming systems by building outposts along the way to uh, cut off the enemy. We talked about this in our uh, science ship video where you're talking about surveying systems to uh, cut off the enemy from being able to take the uh, territory from you and being able to claim all this. Well the only way you can do that is to follow that up with a construction ship. So I would take my construction ship and build something here and then I would take in the construction ship and build something here and again you can hold down shift when queuing orders. Uh, to get multiple orders in a row here and then again when you're going over here to take this one and possibly up to here so that you can try and cut off space so you can claim all this stuff and backfill it later uh, when you need to be very good at the beginning of the game later on not quite so important it also may not be worth to get all systems like this Bernard star here imagine this system was over here in the corner nothing around it it's just a two energy star system I may not claim this system at all or claim it very late in the game because every outpost has, an, uh, has a maintenance cost of one energy. So you, even if you claim this system, it's going to cost you one energy to do. So really all you're getting out of this system is a single energy once you've uh, uh, gotten this. In fact, it's probably not even a single energy because you have to mine this thing and that also costs you one, which we'll talk about in a minute when we talk about stations. Um, so it's a basically a net zero for the system. All you're doing is gaining the territory. And that itself it has it imposes a penalty against you against your em empire size. You can see from districts, systems, and colonies here, uh, and population, all of those are affecting the total empire size. And once your empire size is above 100, uh, there is a cost to um, your technologies, your traditions, your edicts, and campaigns. So keeping that number lower is uh, useful uh, for having high levels of technological advancement and quick unity gain and so on. Now you can't avoid this later in the game. If you want to have a bigger empire, this number is going to balloon. But early in the game, you really want to think about where you want to build and sort of limit uh, what you're building to areas that uh, you need. Like this system and this system would be good to pick up because they both have a planet in it, continental worlds in fact, 
that I can settle on as humans and maybe out this way uh, so that I can cut off territory and maybe claim this little pocket out here, which I don't know quite know what's out here yet, uh, but could be quite useful. So let's talk about research stations. Oh, one last thing is that the, uh, the system you claim, uh, the outpost you build is right in the middle of the system. It's usually right next to the sun. In this system, it's also a star base. Um, and we can talk about star bases in just a minute. Uh, so construction ships and outposts, uh, um, research stations and mining stations. So you build research stations and mining stations around the various aspects in your system. So you can see in my starting system here, we have a mining station right here that's mining the energy from the sun. Here's a little cute mining station mining the energy from the sun. We have one over here that's mining uh, the minerals from the Ceres um, asteroid out here. Or mini planet, this might even be a mini planet. Out in the, uh, the belt here. It's another little station doing its job right there. And your um, construction ship is the one who builds these things. So you can just go to the Neptune here and build that mining station to gab this uh, energy here. We also have a research station around uh, Titan currently uh, right here. That's uh, doing research and collecting these three. Um, uh, this is engineering research. The little cog means engineering. And so these things, once they're mined, they uh, there's a once again a, a small penalty to building the station. It costs you one energy to maintain, but it will collect. It cost you one energy and collect two. And those two, those three will go up here, and then the cost will go up by one. The consumed will go up by one. Uh, same with this. Uh, two here if we go over to Ganymede and collected these two um, uh, engineering researchers it would raise our engineering production over here if you hover this see we're making 22 at the moment it would raise it to 24 further increasing the rate we get engineering research done but at a cost of one energy and the time it takes this particular station uh, this constructor to build them and each of these stations costs a little bit uh, of resources minerals in fact to uh, build 100 each unless you get some sort of discount later in the game. Now also note there are some rare resources in the game that you need to mine, uh, like this for over here. We have rare crystals uh, in this particular system, but we can't mine them until we get the text. So you need the, uh, the all the texts that relate to the various rare materials. And you can see them up under here under this weird sort of um, um, diamond with a line through it, or the double triangle perhaps. And you can see all the different rare resources that are available in the universe. Uh, and that is volatile moats, exotic gases, rare crystals. Uh, those are sort of the main three that you run across in systems, like this one here. And, and they're pretty early. Uh, you can adopt, you can get the, uh, the technology for them fairly early in the game. A little harder to get is living metal, zero, dark matter, and nanites. These are harder to find, uh, usually in rarer systems, and they relate more specifically to very specific uh, techs and upgrades to ships and buildings and stuff that you need those for. Whereas rare crystals, exotic gases, and moats, you use them for more, un sort of, I would say, uncommon tech or advanced tech uh, for your ships and planets and so on. As well as uh, edicts and stuff require some of this stuff as well. Just remember that you can also use these constructors to get those rare resources. Um, you can stack build orders just like you uh, can when you're uh, getting systems. It's the same as before. You just construction ship. See, we're already building one over here. And then if I hold down shift, I can have a second build order over here. And uh, is there another one in the system? There is Vesta here. I can have a, th a third build order for that one. And you can see the ship will go to one to the other and the other. Now, what's interesting about this and something you may not know is that the ship only queues up the cost for the first build order. Um, when it's doing it. So it'll go to the station. Once it arrives, it will pull that 100 out of your stockpile here. Even though I need 300 to do all three of these, um, it's only going to pull the first 100. It's only going to think about that first 100 when it's doing it. So it's going to come along here, grab that first 100, and then once it's done building this, it'll come along here and grab the next 100 it needs out of the stockpile. And if there's nothing in the stockpile, the ship will get will come all the way over here, look at the stockpile and say, there's nothing, and cancel its orders and sit there and wait for you to reassign the orders. Another way to do it is to grab your science, your, uh, not your science ship, your construction ship, and just right click on the entire system. And you can build the mining stations in the system. Or Bernard Star, you can build the mining stations for this system. Um, I don't know why I can't build them here. That's strange. 
but uh, you could you could build the stations by right clicking like that. The last way you can do it is they added this to the game, which is absolutely wonderful. The recent addition is that you have an automatic construction. You just click this on and assign the construction ship will go around its business and upgrading any of these uh, outstanding um, mining and research stations that you have within your borders. Um, so you can collect that stuff on. We'll do it all on its own as it's going along. And this is really helpful because later in the game, let's say I have an empire all the way out here and I get the tech for a rare crystals. I don't have to remember where all the rare crystals were in my empire. The ship, if it's on automatic, will just go find them once I get the tech and uh, mine them for me, pulling the necessary resources. It's sort of like the automatic survey of construction ships. Very useful. The third major area that you need uh, your construction ships for is building mega structures. Now we jumped over to uh, a campaign that's much more advanced than where we were before, just to take a look. So if you go over this little weird looking QB ball thing uh, in the corner here, it says build mega structures. You click on that and it'll tell you what you can build. So I can build hyper relays and orbital rings at the moment. And these are sort of like the first tier mega structures you can get. There's lots of other big mega structures there, out there. The quantum catapult, the science nexus, the command centers. Um, there's big gateways you can build, a whole bunch of stuff. Uh, Dyson spheres and the really advanced level, uh, really cool stuff you can build. But they all require your um, construction ship to do that. And uh, all you do is you go into this menu and you pick which one you want to build. Let's say I want to build a, uh, a hyper relay. So a hyper relay is uh, something that allows you to move quickly between uh, systems by creating sort of uh, it it reduces or eliminates the time spent uh, spooling up your engine to travel between the um, the uh, what do you call it the gateways the whatever you call them the connectors between these systems again this special word for it hyperlanes hyperlanes that's what I'm talking about uh, and so it makes you travel around your empire very quick. Instead of like adding a railroad would be a good way to think of it. And move, you move quickly instead of plodding along on a horse or on your feet. You have a railroad here to move quickly along. It's not instant teleportation like gateways, but it, it definitely improves the speed of your empire. And as you can see here, this is a big red blob, right? This big red blob means I can't build the um, this particular um, hyper relay in this area because hyper relays need to be built at the edge. This is also the case for gateways. Um, and so we have to build it on the edge, so all you do is click it, and then your um, ship will go over here and build this on its own. Uh, you can also do it by clicking here. Uh, let's cancel that order so I can do another one here, Hyper Relay. And you don't have to be in the system you're in. Let's say I want to build it over here. Instead, you can see the red is still here, and I can build it here, and your ship will come from wherever it is to try and build it over here. So don't need to click it in the system that you are at. Um, and for some of the uh, the uh, mega structures, like these hyper relays, you can build them by just right clicking. I right click here and can build hyper relay, and it'll just automatically do it for you. You don't have to worry about that. Most uh, structures you can't do it that way, but hyper relays are one of them because I guess it's sort of a quality of life thing. And uh, one important thing to note is that when you're building these particular uh, mega structures, um, the construction ship is usually only needed for the first step. So sometimes the mega structure only requires one step, like a hyper relay or the orbital ring, which you do around worlds. And I'll show you what the orbital ring looks like, might as well. Let's do orbital ring. Actually, let's cancel their uh, moves first. Got nothing going on here. Orbital ring will go around one of our worlds here, Pippis here. And you can see that uh, I can't build it anywhere in the system. Well, there's no red blob, but I can't build it anywhere in the system, except for where it's got a, a, a nice green thing around it. And this is telling me I can build it around here, because orbital rings need to be built around uh, colonized planets. So I can build around the colonized planet. You can see the outline of the megastructure is here, but when the ship will come and slowly build it. Um, but other megastructures only require one uh, level to get started uh, and for your construction ship. Your construction ship will come, so this is like with gateways, your science nexus, your arts institute, and a whole bunch of others. Um, the, the, it'll come along and it will build a platform to build it on, and then from there on you can just spend your resources to continue to advance it up the levels of that megastructure. And we'll do a whole video on megastructures later, but I just think you should know that particular um, facet of how the constructor ship uh, falls into this. Also note that uh, 
construction ships have to do they have their own stances they have passive and evasive just like um, your science ships I always keep them on evasive because there's really no reason why you need a construction ship to be on passive maybe to sneak around something like this amoeba swarm uh, to get somewhere I really needed to go but I find it's usually just easier to wait for them to either leave or just build the ship where I need it to build and be because these are fairly cheap to build some other notes that are important, some anomalies that pop up require your construction ship. There's a few that, were, that uh, have special missions that your construction ship needs to do, so make sure you have uh, one floating around so you can do it. I always usually have a couple in my empire, I usually start with two and they might have three if I have quite a large empire, sort of spread them out in my empire so that they're uh, near where I need them to be. Um, most of the time they're spent just grabbing systems and then building um, uh, research and uh, mining stations uh, endlessly. Um, like science ships, they do upgrade automatically. So if you click on your ship here and you go to information, you can see that it does have the advanced uh, core and hyperdrive and thrusters and sensors and all that, shields and stuff. So that's cool and fun. Um, And I think that takes us to the end of the construction ship. That's basically all they do. They're fairly simple. They're fairly straightforward. It's useful having a few floating around your empire. It's very useful to stick at least one on your automatic construction so you don't forget to hook stuff up around your empire. Uh, like this, for instance. Oh, that system's not in my empire. Like these uh, particular, this uh, gas here or the uh, dark matter, if I got the tech for it, or even the rare crystals, I don't have that yet, um, that would... Uh, automatically get picked up by one of these constructors. Probably this one sitting right here that's not doing much in my home system. So, hope you enjoyed this. Join me the next one where we do another guide on another kind of ship in the system. Uh, we'll see what that is. Um, hope you join me then, and uh, like and subscribe if you're enjoying the channel. Check out my Stellaris playthroughs if you enjoy Stellaris or other games that I'm playing, uh, such as RimWorld or Ixion or Dwarf Fortress or whatnot. Uh, pops up on my channel because uh, I like to play different games. And uh, we'll see you in the next one. Have a great day.